Hi. Well, today I would like to share some of the uh, the, the tricks that I've learned uh, when I was trying to make uh, an inductor of small values. Well, this same tricks apply actually for inductors of, of any values, but the smaller the value of the inductor, the harder it's uh, um, to measure. Uh, obviously, because uh, it's the everything has an inductor, it's the leads, the um, the imperfections, the material. Um, well, <clears throat> and then there is there is also a question about uh, can we uh, what kind of equipment can be used to measure the inductance, uh, and uh, uh, does it need to be uh, expensive equipment, and uh, what frequencies you can use to measure it. Also, it's important what software we can use to design the uh, the inductors and um, how to make uh, uh, the design our des how to implement our design um, with the accuracy uh, of let's say plus minus five percent or so. So <clears throat> here is what I've. Uh, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, show this time. So first of all, um, in order to make a, a small inductor, and I will explain why I'm using an uh, air core inductor, which is a simple coil uh, that's uh, wound around uh, that I, I uh, with uh, four turns. Uh, it's, this has been wound around uh, uh, this uh, uh, screwdriver bit. Uh, four times, and uh, I believe this is uh, this is oh, I don't know the the gauge of this wire, but you'll see that's not that important uh, since we already have the coil already made it. Um, if you look at the coil and how it's designed, so <clears throat> here we have a uh, foot. Uh, if you look at the, uh, the at the coil from a side, here we have a, a coil which uh, goes around like this, and it has this is this is in this example, uh, I have uh, drawn a single uh, turn of the coil, and if you look from a side at this particular coil, it has four turns, so it's going to be looking like this. So when we're talking about parameters of the coil, we have to uh, measure the outside diameter of the coil, the inside diameter of the coil, and also the length of the coil. Why is it important to, to measure its inside and outside? So let's say, for example, have a, have this uh, um, a simple coil, and I take um, a calipers, and I, I measure inside of the coil, you see inside diameter, in my case, it's uh, five, five eleven, five point twelve millimeters. Well, I have to be careful. No, do not apply uh, lots of pressure to this coil because this is this is this is made out of uh, a very thin wire, and I can easily stretch it by using uh, my calipers, right? And then uh, same thing I do for outside diameter of the coil. Also making sure I don't squeeze it and I don't um, I measure the the diameter when it's in relaxed state. <coughs> uh, I'm measuring its inside and outside because the the diameter I'm interested in is this uh, center line, diameter by center line, which is we can kind of calculating by adding the outside plus inside diameter dividing it by two, which is going to be the mean value between these two. And this is important uh, because in most of the formulas used to calculate the inductance of the of the coil, this is the the diameter that you need to put into a formula to calculate it, and that same same is true for software that uh, I'll be uh, using later that will calculate for me. So you need to know which uh, diameter are you using uh, in order to be uh, uh, to get accurate results. So the length of the coil is also important to measure the length and uh, which is it's 
the all terms together. So if I if I actually I have to measure it very carefully, and especially uh, uh, this uh, dimension, because if I have a coil which has uh, turns which are spread out, then I can easily uh, I can easily push on them uh, on on the turns uh, with my calipers and uh, I get uh, wrong measurements so make sure you don't uh, you don't deform the coil when you measure it uh, <clears throat> which is important the easiest way of course uh, uh, is <clears throat> as you will see uh, in the software I'm using is to make sure that you use minimum distance between the turns you can always uh, change other parameters so this way if, if all the turns are, are uh, have a minimum distance between them or uh, go right next to each other then it's easier uh, to control uh, the dimension this way so <clears throat> here I have already prepared I already measured this this coil uh, uh, and then so I don't have to bother here by writing down on calculations so the diameter is 5.65 millimeter and it's a four turns and the length of the coil is 1.85 millimeter. This one, and that, that's uh, going to result, according to the to the software that I use, the calculations, in 1.15, uh, 1.16 nanohenry or so. First, let's start with the software that I used in order to design uh, the coil that I'm going to measure later. Uh, here's a program that I really like to use. It's it's very small, um, does not uh, require any installation or anything like that, just copy and uh, dump. Uh, this, this, this program was uh, uh, developed by uh, Wilfried Bornaster. Uh, this version is uh, dated back to 2006 and uh, the only thing I'm not sure this this uh, software is being updated, so that's the latest version I was able to find, um, and uh, it doesn't really need any improvements except that there could be some um, cores uh, in this uh, quite extensive database of available standard cores um, that are not listed. Uh, well, besides that, it's perfectly. Uh, a working software and it doesn't uh, and I'm really really happy using it uh, you can search the program's name uh, is uh, mini ring core calculator 1.2 I can't recall the website uh, it's it was available for download for a multiple website and I think uh, this one was developed by some of the German ham radio into this um, to eliminate uh, certain unknowns uh, I would like to try uh, designing uh, air core now uh, this this particular um, dialogue uh, provides uh, an ability to um, design uh, a coil given uh, the inductance that you're looking for. For example, if you're looking for 100 uh, microhenry and uh, uh, let's say uh, you want to uh, a coil to be of a diameter of 5 millimeters and you want it to be 10 millimeters or 1 centimeter long, so um, then you will need 222 turns uh, and in order to uh, accommodate that you will have to use a wire of uh, 3.496 meter and the maximum diameter uh, of the wire also in millimeters is going to be um, 0 0.0.45 millimeters so let's see if we change this to nano Henry's so seven turns and you can use 1.4 millimeter wire and if you want to 
I use five millimeter uh, lens. It's a zero point nine millimeter uh, wire. Um, what I'm gonna do uh, right now, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to uh, basically assuming all the formulas here it works correctly I've tried it and verified it multiple times myself so <coughs> here I have a coil that I wound around uh, uh, a drill bit and it has four turns and uh, diameter is uh, 5.65 and the lens is 1.85 millimeter and that uh, shows me that I will have an inductance uh, equivalent to 115.8 nano Henry um, well let's check if if this is in fact uh, going to match uh, my measurements using my handheld oscillometer and how I can make uh, measurements of the uh, small inductance value uh, such as this uh, 115 nano Henry. So uh, the next step is to figure out how we're going to validate this. What I have is uh, is is this uh, LCR meter. Uh, it's this is a handheld LCR meter made by Agilent, and the the particular unit I have is U seventeen thirty two C. This is the <laughs> this is uh, for, I don't know how and why, but. Um, uh, there is there is a better unit that goes. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive, uh, but it goes into uh, uh, frequency wise. Uh, it goes into uh, a range of 100 kilohertz. This one goes only to 10 kilohertz, and it doesn't have a, a DC measurement range. But that's not important. So okay, we <coughs> there are, there are more expensive LCR meters, uh, bench top LCR meters, of course that can measure uh, with frequencies up uh, uh, megahertz and you know there there's no there's no limit on uh, what kind of equipment you can use so the data sheet of this uh, LCR meter um, shows that uh, I should be uh, able to measure the inductance of this coil um, with enough accuracy and uh, so how do I do that? Um, the obvious uh, way of measuring an inductance, let's say if I have a, this this resistor, is to use is to use these connectors right here, uh, these clips, and I just plug it in, and I switch to. Uh, resistance and it shows me 10 ohm at 10 kilohertz AC fine so this is the way to measure it well this coil of course will not fit uh, I mean if I try to, to put it in I mean I will have to deform it well that's not a usual inconvenience if you have a coil which has leads but uh, I will see the problem why so in order to solve this particular problem um, this unit came with two two leads like this, uh, so I can plug them in. Well, suppose I can also connect it together and switch to inductance measurement. It's uh, so the the inductance of of this. It's it's a single turn or half turn or I guess it's a single turn. It's uh, zero point two micro Henry. Okay, so um, 
let's say I'm setting this to no and now you can see that uh, it started jumping I use this uh, needs to carefully connect it to the coil and what I see is 0 0.116 0 0.114 microhenry or 115 microhenry so it works and the results you can see match so it works well I found that this is not it's not usually well I just uh, first of all what I did is I, uh, I tinned the ends of this coil very accurately and then so they are fresh and there are no oxidation on, on the coil um, what I found that uh, works even better for for this uh, low values of uh, inductance is uh, is this device here so I I may do uh, two uh, rigs like uh, like this. So uh, this is a, a, a symbol, a, sing, a single PCB board, a piece of PCB board, where I remove the uh, the areas in in between this uh, banana uh, plugs, and I uh, I made a gap about two millimeters. And uh, I soldered them to the board, and you can see like this. So this 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 construction fits right in here, and um, I can I can measure the value of an inductor if it's uh, if it's soldered right here. Um, well, I made a pair of the, this. This is this is uh, the the one I use for measuring. And so I made another one, uh, another. A piece like this but this time I didn't remove the, the copper in between didn't make any gaps so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to uh, plug this right in uh, like this you can see and I'm going to uh, well you see the value is 0, 0 0.3 um, micro Henry, or in this case, it's a two nano Henry. So, this this kind of construction provides very low inductance, and um, I can set this to zero. So, this is this is going to be my my reference. A point. So this this uh, this board, uh, this piece is made exactly for that purpose, is to provide the reference. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, this board right here and I put it on uh, on this uh, smaller. Uh, I will do, I will I will solder this touching the, the ends with my hands so I guess yes now it's perfect so I have a another 
uh, part uh, which is um, I'm going to use now in order to measure the inductance of this coil and uh, I already zeroed out the inductance okay so what we have is uh, what it shows is this is this is the 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 value which is um, shown right here and you can see that sometimes when you're using um, <coughs> a leads the the inductor values jumps up and down up and down and in this case it's very stable and the longer you keep it in there the the more accurate is the measurement so of course up to certain results so actually the the data sheet for this device uh, shows that there is a, a mecha, there's some setting that you can use in order to um, in order to regulate how long you you this device will be pulling the 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 uh, the value of um, of the coil. So what we get here is uh, 1.17, and you see it's it's very stable, doesn't jump anywhere. So I'm quite sure this is uh, 0.117 microhenry. <clears throat> and if I try to measure again. This should be zero because I already I already set it to zero for this particular yes see it's it's, it's zero what was zero so if I make another measurement if I say how it is so this is a zero and I can repeat it. So it shows 118. And to start with, it was 115. But 118, oh my God. Uh, 119, 118, and another heading. It matches uh, what uh, the software is. Uh, <coughs> so, what, the, what I calculated using the software on my PC. Uh, one more uh, comment I have to say about this uh, specific oscillometer. So this this kind of rig is very easy to make. Uh, I just need two banana plugs and uh, uh, that removes lots of uncertainty uh, from the measurements if you solder it on. Uh, if you solder your your uh, your device to this uh, uh, to this rig and it's it turns out to be cheap so uh, to be honest uh, I have seen uh, a commercial um, devices like this uh, commercial rigs um, sold by Agilent for their high-end LCR meters uh, that measure in one, mega, uh, one megahertz and they also include uh, soldering the device onto the uh, to the rig that they provide. And of course, they charge a lot for it. <laughs> well, this one cost me almost nothing. Um, another interesting thing that I have purchased uh, for this LCR meter is this uh, tweezers. <laughs> um, I don't. And you can see these are tweezers and um, this they have a gold connectors and you can point at this and if you have a piece of uh, I don't know uh, do I have any this meant to be used with Uh, with surface mount components. So I have a, a, a can full of uh, SMD components that I have uh, uh, recycled and I, I just want to explain uh, what's the problem with that. So if I try to use to measure the, uh, the capacitance of this uh, SMD capacitor, it's kind of small, if you can see it, Using this device, 
um, uh, this LCR meter this way to capacitance uh, look see 8 microfarad boom 5 picofarad 6 microfarad oh yes something unreal <laughs> so <laughs> uh, and these these are these are our are, are gold uh, plated contacts right <laughs> And the trick is that uh, well, why do you why do you use them? Well, you you want to use them when you want to measure uh, the capacitance of a, or inductance of uh, of an SMD a component that you don't know. I mean, you don't have to measure it for new uh, for new components like this, right? Because it's already I already know what it is. I already I trust what uh, what. Uh, uh, what the, uh, the the marking says, right? So uh, usually when, when you need to measure it, it's old. But uh, the flux and all other residue that's uh, on the contacts making this uh, um, tweezers very hard to use. So you have to almost squeeze it and push it hard enough and then keep squeezing it and oh, my hands are shaking and then you can see it's still jumping and I can't really um, it can't really uh, determine what the real capacitance is of this uh, capacitor and most of them are like that so they have some kind of some uh, some parts of a residue so these tweezers only work on new components well I already know the value of new components so oh, catch twenty one. Well, um, I hope you find this video a little bit useful, useful, <laughs> and um, uh, informative. Thank you very much. Bye.